My flying scaled back to only about two flights a month since summer's ended. The kids are in school and our travel schedule is a bit hampered from that, but there's still plenty to talk about in TBM land, so I wanted to cover some topics that don't necessarily happen in flight. I think I've mentioned this before, but one thing that sets Dyer apart from other manufacturers, at least in my experience, is how hard they work on making upgrades available for older aircraft in the fleet. Folks like Cirrus have done a solid job on this as well, but Dyer seems to take it to the next level. Except for some of the interior features like the newly redesigned seats, Dyer provides options that basically let me turn a TBM 900 into a 910, or maybe let's call it a made up number in between, like a TBM 905. The primary thing that does that is an upgrade of the glass panel by swapping it out for the G1000 NXI. At first I wasn't really interested in this upgrade, but the more I thought about it, the more I became convinced that I should make the change. Along with it, you can add the Garmin 345 ADSP out transponder, which allows you to bring ADSP weather and traffic data into ForeFlight while making use of the aircraft's external antenna. As big of an upgrade as this would appear, it seems that it's primarily swapping out a few boxes. These boxes go away, replaced by newer ones with the same form factor. They even think the install time might be as low as 8 to 10 hours once shops are experienced with the work. Beyond just the panel upgrade, there are other things like angle of attack and ESP. I had ESP in my older SR-22. ESP, or Electronic Stability Protection, is a system that's enabled when the autopilot's off. You can think of it like an instructor sitting in the right seat, watching out for unusual pitch and bank attitudes. If it spots one, it uses the autopilot servos to fight back against your inputs on the yoke, getting more aggressive as the attitude gets more out of the norm. But eventually, once you get too extreme, it gives up. This system can be disabled for training scenarios as you need to, but it turns on for each flight by default. I honestly never found it really useful in the Cirrus, as that's not a plane that you do a lot of hand flying with, but the idea makes sense. Angle of attack gives you two primary additions to the PFD display. An arc scale showing angle of attack, which is the angle of your wing relative to the incoming air, and there's a green circle on the airspeed indicator that gives you a dynamically calculated target approach speed to maintain. AOA is the real indication of whether or not you're about to stall. It takes into account factors like how much G you're pulling and the current weight of the aircraft, plus it handles changes in flat position, all things that aren't covered by just looking at memorized airspeed references. Some systems even take into account that you might have ice on the aircraft and adds an extra margin of safety above and beyond the normal critical angle of attack value. I've used angle of attack in many flight sims when landing as it gives you the info you need to land a variety of aircraft without having to know too much about the airplane's particulars. Those enhancements are nice, but I think my favorite might be the underspeed protections. These give you an audio alert if you get too slow, and even push the nose down to build a little bit of speed if you're on the autopilot and get near the stall. I think this will save lives, as it's easy to forget to add power back in after a long descent, and when you level off, you have the potential to get slower and slower and slower. The slower you get, the higher the angle of attack gets, and therefore, the more you continue to slow down, this alert gets you ahead of that and helps you correct it. Dyer also has an upgrade for adding a lavatory to the plane. It takes over the room normally given to the two rear seats in the baggage area, so it really isn't interesting to me, but I'm sure for some the ability to add a bathroom is pretty valuable. So that covers some of the recent news and upgrades for the TBM. I'm sure they're working on more. I've been really impressed at how much effort they apply to keeping the entire fleet modernized. And thanks for watching. Please do add a comment with any questions or new topics you'd like me to go into.